What's going on, y'all? It's Frank. This is Morals Over Money. Welcome back to the channel. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick update on Shake. A lot of people over the weekend were asking um, how he was doing. Um, people were concerned. So let me take you back a couple months. Uh, approximately three months ago, it was actually on a live um, where Shake's mother hadn't heard from him in, you know, a couple weeks, which was... Um, that was odd for her, she said. Um, so Shake at the time had a little dog and that dog was his world. That was his best friend. He would, um, always make sure if he was ripping and running in the streets, um, wasn't doing well in his addiction and wasn't going to be home. He would call his mom and tell his mom, yo, please go check on the dog. Make sure the dog's fed. Um, make sure the dog has water. And his mom would go and check on a dog. So his mom um, became alarmed because, first of all, she couldn't get a hold of him for, you know, about a week. And then he never called to ask her to check on the dog, right? So she went and knocked on his apartment. Um, and mind you, his mom, you know, she's she's an older woman. She lives in a, like a retirement home, an old folks home, Um so she's an older woman. So she goes to his apartment, knocks on the door, um, and all she hears is the dog barking. So she becomes even more concerned. She's like, okay, the dog's in there. Um, Shake always has somebody check on that dog. You know, that dog is his baby. Um, so she calls me after that and says, look, Frank, I think something's wrong. Um, I went and knocked on the door. Nobody answers. And the dog's in there. And me knowing how important that dog is to shake, um, I also felt a concern. So, <clears throat> so I was at home. Um, I told her, look, when I come to Philly this weekend, I'm making a point to go. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go and check on him. And I'll give you a call and let you know uh, what I hear. All right. So I go knock on the door. Hear the dog. Um, no shake. Front door is locked. Back door is locked. Um, so shake is known on the block. You know, the guys that, that live on the block, no shake. They like him. Um and they see my truck, you know, drop him off and pick him up numerous times. Um, they actually thought that we were family. So they told me, uh, excuse me, I'm in the line to pick up Major from school. So if you say gets interrupted real quick. Um, so they say, um, you know, hey, you looking for your uncle? I said, yeah. They said, we haven't seen him for a couple days. Um... His family, you know, his mother's been looking for him and they said, yo, there's been a car that has been parked up the block and the car is looking for him also. So I asked them, I said, do you guys recognize who was in the car? I asked them, uh, what kind of car was it? You know, just to get some specifics, um, just in case, God forbid, something did happen, right? So they filled me in, said, look, we don't know them, but... We know that they're looking for him. They've been watching his apartment and, um, you know, it just, it's abnormal. Um, I asked them, I said, yo, did y'all see him? Said no. So I said, all right. So I actually went around um, to check the windows, right? And I said, all right, you know, this is, this is becoming more alarming and I need to know he's all right. I wasn't planning to leave that house until I made entry to the home to make sure everything was okay. Um, so I'm there with one of my homies and uh, my homie ended up climbing in the window. Um, my fat ass wasn't fitting up that window. <laughs> so my homie climbs up the window, goes inside, makes entry. Um, hold on one second. My dog's about to come in. What's up, dog? How you doing, puppy? Good. I love you. How was your day? Good. Good. Seatbelt. Yes, sir. 
Put that seatbelt on, boozy, boozy, put that seatbelt on, little dog. Little dog. I love you. You can give me a fucking kiss. You can even give me a kiss. Love you. All right, I brought you a donut. Put your little donut. I met him a donut. Pop, wait, two. Awesome, two. Yeah, one is for your sister. All right, so hold on. Let me finish recording. I'm recording the video here so that we finish this. And then we can, um, we can talk. You want to say what's up? Say what's up. How was school? Good. Okay, good. All right. So, my, you show my homie, um, uh, he makes the way into the window, but, so this was the crazy part. Um, when I opened the window, I could step up on the ledge and put my face in there. When I put my face in there, I didn't like what I smelled. It was, it was, it was alarming. Um, so it set off all those red flags that you don't want to be set off when you're looking for somebody that you care about. When he makes it in, I tell him, yo, unlock the back door for me. So he unlocks the back door and I tell him, you go to the front, I go to the back and we just, we'll meet. You know, you check the front, I'll check the back. Uh, the dog was there, right? So I seen the dog's bowl. Dog didn't have no, no food, no water. Um, which was nervous and there was a smell in the air. So I, we check all the rooms, nothing. He's not there. The smell was, you know, it was, it was, uh, the dog waste, you know, from being in there, I guess a couple of days, but he's not in there. So I instantly call his mom, say, yo, he's not here. The dog's here. She said, okay. I told her, look, I'll leave the back door open for you. She came, pick up the dog. A couple of days later, Shake calls me. Turns out he was in the hospital. He had a bad infection in his leg. So he comes home from the hospital, we meet up, speak. I don't hear from him for about two weeks. His mother ends up calling me, tells me he's in the hospital again. I go to the hospital, go see him. This is right before I'm going to Puerto Rico. Go to the hospital, go see him, take us some clothes, you know, a couple of things that he needed. He didn't look good, but he looked better than he did, you know, when he was out ripping and running the streets. At this time, he had been in the hospital for about two weeks. His hair is long, his beard has grown out, you know, and Shake, every time I've seen Shake, he's been put together for the most part. He's extremely optimistic. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna stay here in this hospital. They're gonna set me up with treatment. They're helping to lower me down on my dosages uh, so that I'm not going into full blown withdrawal, right? Hold on. Eat the whole thing, you weirdo. I end up leaving to Puerto Rico. When we're on, we left in Newark. So we have to pass sorted through Philly. So I stopped by, seen him that day again, which was, you know, about a week after the first time I seen him. Um, go back, you know, just check on him. He's extremely optimistic. He's saying, yo, I'm staying here. You know, everything's all good. I feel good. Those of you that have experienced this before, when we first started to get clean, it's very emotional. Um, you're crying all the time. You feel good. You feel sad. You know, your, your emotions, and your senses are all over the place. They're on a roller coaster. Um, so he's experiencing all that. We're messaging um, and talking numerous times throughout the day at this time. So I go to Puerto Rico. I'm talking to him or messaging him, you know, on pretty much a daily basis, sending him pictures. I told him, I said, look, the first thing you need to do is get out of Philly. So he said, look, you know, I, I understand that. I know that's what I need to do. So he asked me, look, can you help me with that? He said, I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to get out of here. He said, I, I don't want to go back to the streets. He said, I'm feeling good for the first time. Um, mind you, at this time, he had been removed from the streets for, I would say, a good month. He um, he was in the hospital. He was, he was uh, you know, they had lowered him down, took him all the way off the his fentanyl, and then they were dropping him down on his medications that they gave him for pain, right? So I told him, all right, Shake, when I get back, we'll figure something out to try to get you out of Philly, right? So the week that I'm scheduled to come back from Puerto Rico, um, we were scheduled to come back on a Wednesday. Monday, I sent him a message. Don't hear that back. Tuesday, I'm busy. You know, we're busy uh, doing the last minute things before we get ready to take that flight. Wednesday, I message him again. Don't hear nothing. Thursday, I get back. Friday, I message him again, don't hear nothing. Then I message his mom 
and said, yo, what's up with Shake? I said, I, I've been messaging him and I haven't heard anything I'm concerned. She tells me that he left the hospital and stood with her over one night, but he couldn't stay there because she's in, you know, an old person's home. And then he left. Mind you, Shake had, he had a major surgery done on his knee because of the infection he had. Um, he had, you know, I, I forgot the, the exact name of the infection he had, but it was a serious infection. If I find it, I'm going to look it up after I'm done with this while I'm editing. And if I find it, I'll put it in here so you guys can um, can see it, you know, what it is. And I'll touch on it real quick. And I'm going to share with you guys some of our texts um, so you can see the state of mind that he was in. He was extremely optimistic and hopeful um, to be able to be successful at the shot and recovery. And this, you know, this new lease on life. Because before he ended up in the hospital, so the infection took over him and he collapsed. He was in his house and he got extremely sick because his body was becoming septic um, due to the infection. So he realized, he was like, man, I got lucky. Um, I could have died in my house. I was there for three days and didn't have any help. And he's like, somebody came and checked on me and that's how they found out that I was, you know, there he said, I was laying on the floor. He said, I couldn't do nothing. You know, I was like going to the bathroom by myself and everything because the infection just took over him. Um, so that's what's going on with Shake. The last two times I went to Philly, I looked for him, didn't find him. Um, so keep him in prayer. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to fill you on with him. I'll make another video later on tonight or tomorrow. Um, in regards to Antoine and Phil Young and with Antoine and what Antoine has been doing. And uh, so just remember, and this goes to show just how hard it is to leave them streets alone. Um, addiction is, it's a beast. It's a beast, man. So just be grateful everybody that's, that's in recovery and don't take it for granted. So stay blessed, y'all. Have a great day, and remember to be kind, loving, and patient.